Um, I chose to do the halting problem, which, uh, so why did I choose this? Um, it's basically a computer science topic, and I feel like it would be a good idea to dive into some more computer science topics that we haven't been able to cover yet. Um, it's also a very philosophical and logical kind of question, and I just I love that stuff, and I, I thought it would be really fun. Uh, the conclusions of this problem impacted multiple fields, um, mathematics, philosophy, logic, and computer science. And it's also historically important because it's one of the first problems ever to be proven undecidable. So it's origin. Um, David Hilbert was a mathematician, a German mathematician, who was very influential in mathematical logic. And in 1928, he asked three big questions. The first of which was, was mathematics complete? Was mathematics consistent? And the third, which is very important for this problem, was, was mathematics decidable? Which has a name because it's such a popular question now that it's called Hilbert's decision problem. Um, and once he asked this problem, a bunch of mathematicians basically started to try and to make tools that could solve this problem. Um, so what is a decision problem? A decision problem is basically a problem that takes in inputs and then either responds with yes or no. And it's as simple as that. And if it can always respond yes or no, then it is considered decidable. But if in any case there is not a response that you can say yes or no, then it's considered undecidable. So an example decision problem is, this is a pretty simple one, it's given two numbers, x and y, does x evenly divide y? And this is a decision problem because you're always going to, it, it expects a yes or no answer. Um, so with this, you just use the long division algorithm and you take x divided by y and if there's zero decimals after, you can say, Yes, it evenly divides. If there's decimals, you say no. And since you always get a yes or no, it's considered decidable. Uh, Hilbert's decision problem, basically just like that, just a little more complicated. He asks um, if there is any algorithm that can basically look at any first order logic and always say yes or no if it's completely valid. Um, which, if he could do so, it would basically be able to um, verify algebraic equations, integration in calculus, or the truth of a derivation in logic. And this inspired a lot of people to really tackle this problem, uh, which also helped lead to the Turing machine which is an abstract machine which uh, basically reads off a tape and follows a specific set of rules. And it can, it can be constructed to uh, basically simulate any algorithm. And what's very important for once we get into this problem is it has infinite memory. So what is the halting problem? It's basically just like uh, Hilbert's decision problem, except it asks, is there a machine that, given an arbitrary computer program and an input, will always have a correct response on whether the f program will finish or will it run forever and not finish? And it's important that this is assumed to be on a Turing machine because then it'll run infinitely. and. We'll get into that. Uh, so a simple example of how this would work and how you can see an answer to this is 
you have a machine, and basically it has some crazy algorithm in it, and it, uh, it asks, does it halt? And it will respond with yes or no. And so the program we're going to input is while true, continue, which is the algorithm. And then the first input we'll try is if you put in something true, you'll see that it'll run forever because it'll just keep looping through and never end. So it, the machine would be able to say yes uh, or no, this will never halt. And if you put in a false input, it, it's pretty simple to see that it'll just stop and the machine will say yes, this will halt. But this is pretty, this is pretty basic. What, what would happen if we have much trickier things that aren't as easy to see as this? Um, so in order to answer that, we have to get into solving the halt, halting problem. And to do that, we want to prove that the halting problem is non-computable. And if that's the case, it cannot exist. So in other words, we want to show that there's no algorithm that we can use to tell whether or not any arbitrary program will halt. And to do this, we'll use a proof by contradiction, which is what Alan Turning did in 1936. So basically, we take that original machine with that crazy algorithm, and we're basically just putting it as a decision box for simplicity. And if you remember, what it does is it takes in the program and an input and it says, yes, it halts, or no, it doesn't. And by simply adding at the end of it, if it, if it says, yes, it does halt, we're going to add a loop that goes on forever. And if no, it doesn't halt, or no, yeah, no, it doesn't halt, we're going to add that it halts. And this is pretty cool because if you then take this machine and feed it to itself, so you ask, does this machine halt when fed to this machine? And what happens is that if the machine, which is supposed to always give you a right answer, says, yes, I do halt, it then loops forever and contradicts itself. But if you say, no, I don't halt, then it halts and also contradicts itself. And through this contradiction, basically um, show that it, this machine cannot exist and there exists no machine that can accomplish what uh, the halting problem machine is trying to accomplish. And it, this can be kind of confusing and a more simpler way to think about it is um, this, what happened at MIT in 1986, a professor asked his class, uh, at the, as he's getting ready to end the class, he says, is there any last questions? And a student asks, will this be the last question? And basically, it's a very clever question because no matter what the professor says, the student then has the opportunity to contradict him. So there, there can never be a valid answer to that question. Because if the professor says, yes, this is the last question, the student only need ask one more question. But if he says, no, this is not the last question, the student just need not answer another question or ask another question. And basically, it just proves that computers and humans can't do everything or solve everything. There's perfectly valid questions that it will never be able to answer. Um, so what are implications of this? It solved Albert's decision problem, which is very impressive in itself. And it also, like, if you're in the workplace and your boss ever asks you to basically make some very general optimization that can cover everything, you can tell him you can't do that, it's impossible, because what he's asking you to do is the halting problem described or disguised as um, so, so they just won't understand that. And this is like some kind of logic that you can throw at them to tell them why it's not possible. 
also, uh, if you want a compiler that finds the fastest possible machine code for any given program, can't do it. It's a halting problem. For JavaScript security, if you have JavaScript with some variables at high levels, high security levels, and some at low security level, and you want to make sure that an attacker can't get at the high security information, you're not going to be able to do it. It's the halting problem in disguise. If you have a parser for your programming language, and then you want to change it, but you want to make sure that it still parses all the programs it used to, impossible. It's the, again, it's the halting problem. If you want to check an antivirus program and you want to see if it ever executes a malicious instruction, you won't be able to do it because, again, it's a halting problem. And the final thoughts are this solves something that had major implications on mathematics and logic and computer science, which in itself I think is really cool. And it really raised the question of what does it mean that computers can't analyze themselves? And even more, what does it mean for what the human brain can know about itself? And I, I feel like these are just really cool question, or, yeah, questions and things to think about. And I suggest looking into the problem more. Thank you.